Hello, YouTube. It's me, your girl. Uh, uh, uh. Awesome. I said, let me come on on here and talk. When you have time to talk, talk. I've been off work for two weeks. Well, it'd be two weeks at the end of this week. Today is March 21st, 2021. Today is day 12 from my um, post off gastric bypass weight loss surgery. Um, and I just want to come in here like my nails. Ain't they cute? Ain't they cute? I wanted to come on here and give y'all some update because I don't want to cram my videos in one because my two week post op is is March twenty third. No, March twenty fourth, twenty twenty one is my two week follow with my physician. So right now we're on day twelve post op. So I just want to go on here and talk about the things that I needed for my procedure, my recovery time, um, what I really only use the most of my whole time of being home. So first of all, support. That's number one, support. You gotta have support. If you ain't got no support, mm -mm. support. That's number one. And the day of surgery, I didn't really talk about my whole experience with the surgery, but I had surgery March, March 10th, 2021, and I ended up having a hernia repair and I had a gastric bypass. So my surgery time was supposed to, it was at 10.30 a.m. Central time. I don't remember anything. All I remember is being in the room and then next thing you know, I was out. I don't remember what happened, how long it took. I just know they did say it took a little longer than the two hours that it was supposed to take. So it probably took like two and a half, three hours. I'm not sure. But the surgeons did tell me that everything looked great. My liver, everything was fine. It's just that he didn't feel right leaving that little hernia repair. That hernia right there, just doing the surgery. So he repaired it. Now, there was a section on my stomach, which I'm going to show in that later on at my two week. I'll show y'all what it looked like. But, um, to compare what it looks like when after surgery and then what it looks like now. Today is day 12. It's not as bad, but when I had my tummy tuck back when, I it was like 2000, I think it was 2000 and maybe 17, 16. I remember. I have a clip of card of when I get a chance, but look at my other videos if you want to know exactly when I had one. But after that, I had my fibers removed and a partial hysterectomy because my fibers are so bad. It was horrible. And I was like, I, had, I was blessed with three children and I wasn't looking to have any more. I am 42 years old. So I ended up getting a partial done. I think I was 39, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. But I went ahead and did it because why not? And so I feel like when they try to do it like a scopy, my uter, the fibers were so big. It was like I was 16 weeks pregnant. She couldn't do it like a scopy, So she had to cut me. So that's why I have those little spots on my stomach. And I was really, really upset because damn, he just ruined my whole tummy tuck look, but whatever. And uh, she tried and it didn't work. So I always had a problem with scar tissue is what I thought it was scar tissue. It wasn't always scar tissue. It was that hernia. And I developed a hernia after that uh, removal of the fibroids. And I didn't know it was a hernia. So when he did it, and the EDG doesn't show a hernia repair, he has to go in to see it. So when he saw it, it was that same section where it, I thought it was a scar tissue. It wasn't. I'll show you. I didn't really feel like going on here right now to show y'all that. But this is day 12 of my stomach. This is one hole. <laughs> one hole where they did it. Let me get a little closer. I was not trying to do this, but why not? So this is the one. This is another one. And this is a big one. This is where I dealt with a lot of swollenness and um, scar tissue issues, which, which I thought. But I think this is where the hernia was repaired. Because this is my most painful, uncomfortable area. And then this is another one. And another one. And these are the already had these when she tried to do the fibroids laparoscopy removal and she didn't. She wasn't able to because it was too big. So this is my most painful as well right here. But it has went down from the last time I showed y'all, which I'll try to clip it in here on the side if I can. But it's still kind of swollen, but it's not too bad. It's still healing, which is good. So back to regular programming. So I had a hernia repair, the hernia repair, 
And I feel like that's where a lot of my discomfort came from because of that area the most. And in the hospital, it was painful. Um, it was just trying to get up and move around. But day one and day two, I got, I got discharged the next following day. So I went home on day two. I was laying there for one night and I was very grateful for it. But I wasn't ready to come home. I was like, am I ready? But they said I was taking out my liquids. My lab work came out good. I didn't need to stay. And when he does the procedure, when my surgeon does my, when he did my procedure, he didn't, um, he did an EDG at the same time doing the surgery. So I didn't have to take any barium to make sure x-rays because he said usually those come back positive and great. He really don't know. So I didn't have to drink anything to see if I was clear or do x-rays. He already did the procedure while he was doing the laparoscopy gastric bypass. He also had me under for, um, EDG. So you know, I don't know. Everybody's different. No right way or wrong as long as we come out of it safety and safe, right? And so I went home and it was just pain trying to figure out how to sleep. Oh my God, it was horrible trying to sleep. So um, I didn't know what I was going to do. Because you know, you're in a hospital bed. I don't have a bed that rotate up and down. I have a bed, okay? But just trying to figure out how to sleep and get comfortable, that is the most painful is horrible is I can't even explain the pain he was supposed to send me home with Tylenol codeine liquid but um I never got the prescription filled so I don't know if that I, if I would have had it, it would have made my pain better but I didn't take it anymore after I left the hospital I was I didn't buy any I just wanted to just get ride a roller coaster and so my husband brought me uh Optimus. I slept on the couch I'm still on the couch right now because I'm still trying to make sure that this what is it? The right side. You have to sleep on the opposite side. So I've been sleeping a lot on my uh, left side, on this side, whatever. A lot. And um, the ottoman for a while, the first couple of days, I had to sleep sitting up and I had my feet on the ottoman or I would try to prop a whole bunch of pillows on the side of me and then like sleep a little higher up on that side just to kind of keep the other side rested because I could not have slept on that side. The discomfort was mostly the pain for me and I was dealing with that mostly was what I was, I didn't like, but you know, hey, pain is beauty. But let me go in here and talk about the things that I needed because I don't wanna keep rambling on and y'all like, what, blah, blah, blah. So I did, I did use, oops, sorry. I used dial soap on my, my areas where my incisions was just for cleaning antibacteria and I just wanted to make sure that area was safe and getting, being cleaned properly. These are the things that I really needed after surgery. I really needed this pillow when I was sleeping so I would put it around my neck just to like be comfortable when I was sleeping upright or when I was laying on my side because my shoulders was hurting all the time. So I had already had this little airplane pillow. So I said, let me try to sleep with this or let it try. Let me have something else on me. I took the tissue from the hospital. We purchased everything in there from covers to tissues to give me this and give me that. I use tissue um, because my nose was running a lot. I had a lot of dry nose. I don't know because when they put the oxygen in me, but for some reason I had experienced a lot of dryness in my nose. So I had a lot of tissue. This smooth um organic move i did take this to the hospital with me and i put it in my little tea and then what i would do was i would make my own tea container and then i would uh pour my tea pour whatever i could in here and then i would just like dump some of the water dump i was drinking out of medicine cups for the first five or six days i would drink like one ounces of these um, so 16 of these were giving me my 16 ounces of water. So I was just sipping because it helped me control my sipping. So I did, they gave me some of these at the hospital. So I just took them and I use these a lot. And then when I upgraded to where I didn't need the one ounces that I could do two ounces, I did sip out of these for a while too, which these are two ounces. So if I was trying to make a, some broth, which I did not like broth, that, that is not my thing. But water, broth, whatever I needed to try to make sure I got my water in, I would take two of these and this is four ounces. So I knew what I was getting into, just measuring wise. But I don't use those anymore. And remember, I'm on day 12. The tea thing did not really work for me. Um, it didn't move anything for me. 
I don't know if I was supposed to use two or three bags, but I only used one bag. Maybe I should have used more, but it did not work. When I was constipated on day six, and that was the worst pain ever. It was just, it was, I'm not gonna say ever, but it was painful being constipated like that. And I thought this would work, it didn't. So I had to get that my that uh, milk of magnesia. I would take 30 milliliters. I only had to take one dose of that, and that was it. Um, my warming pad, it helped me a lot. Like for when I was in, in discomfort or the gas pain, the gas pain is a biatch, okay? Yes, you hear me, biatch. I will put this on my stomach. I will put this on my back. I will put this on my shoulder. I was trying everything to get that gas pain. Even walking wasn't even working for me. But then it's like, everybody said, walk, 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 walk. I walk, I walk, I walk. Well, walk, how much you gotta walk? You gotta walk an hour, two hours? I don't know. But it got to the point where I was like, I'm about to just walk every 30 minutes. I just need to walk. And I, I think it worked. I'm not sure, but I did walk. And when I wasn't walking, I would keep this on me, on my back, because I was starting to have back pains. Or I would keep it on my stomach and just rub it and massage it and try to keep it warm and just help that area. So I did need my warming pad. That's my heating pad. This was definitely a must. I don't use it anymore, but it's a must. Now, the gas X. That did not really work for me. I did have these chewable gas eggs. I took them. They did not really do any gas pain, but I still was taking them. So just have them on hand. It may work for you, but I did take them. Like out of this whole container, I still I only took like three. I didn't really, or four. I didn't really use them like that, but whatever. Hey, get you some. Just to have them, you just never know. I don't know how much you're supposed to chew of them, but I try to do the recommend amount which is one or two tablets as needed after meals or bedtimes do not exceed four tablets in 24 hours as expected it's on the back of the box don't quote me don't tell me i told you to do this i'm not a professional i'm just a regular person and they and i also since i was in pain i did take the liquid tylenol which was over the counter, which it was nasty. And I didn't really want to take it because my physician and surgeon said I'm not supposed to swallow pills. I can't swallow pills for two months or take gummies for two months. And I really get, when I do get to take gummies in two months, which is eight weeks, I have to get them to a liquid form and then kind of let it go down. I'm not supposed to chew down. This is their instructions. This is what they're telling me. And I'm going to follow my surgeon's information. So I did use this a lot. Tylenol disposable pack. These was a life saver like i would take these a lot um so i would just open it i would put it on my tongue and i didn't need no water and it was just good to go i really like these a lot so i didn't use a lot of them but i did use enough get you some i ordered these on amazon what else is in my goodie bag Vena fiber. This is handy because we're not getting the fiber we need with the liquid. So I did use this a lot. Honestly, when I was concentrating on day six, I did try to take three of these. It didn't work. And that's when I'm with the milk of magnesia and that helped. So actually on day 11, I didn't want to take no more milk of magnesia. So I said, let me try to do these again. So I chewed three of these, which is the serving size. Um, it says 12 years and above three tablets. This is what I took, the Vena fiber tablets and it helped me and i didn't need to take my magnesia so it actually had uh, a bowel movement <laughs> two times in one day yes that was yesterday i felt very light boom and what else did i need and you have to have your vitamins all in order so it's very important that you have your vitamins set up before you go to the hospital or discharge because even though i was told not to take my vitamins until um day the day after surgery so which was the third day so after the, the third day i was able to take vitamins which is my chewable so make sure you have the vitamins that you need um and that you're able to take so i did need this this definitely helped me um organize my vitamins and how to take them so make sure you have this prepared for you you have to have all your things and it's so important and people if everybody asks me why did you have it because i wanted why did i have weight loss surgery because i wanted change change for me that's it there's no more talking and like when it comes to the weight it's not something i'm kind of glad i'm very glad a lot of people don't know i had the procedure 
because I don't have to talk about how much weight I've lost. It's not about the weight. That is not my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is actually to be able to run around the park and not be tired. Like the weight is going to come off and you have to work hard. And this is not easy. This is probably one of the most challenging things I've ever done when it comes to weight loss. But you know, I'm okay with it because I wanted to do it. I hear a lot of people say, I wish I would have did it sooner. I don't wish I would have done, done this sooner because I've learned a lot of weight eating habits, a lot of ways to eat. We're cooking, how to cook healthy food in the process of my challenges. I've learned how to fast. I've learned how to do keto. I've learned paleo. I've learned vegetarian. I've learned so many other ways to eat to put implement this. My most challenge is trying to figure out what kind of program am I going to follow lifetime after this like once i can get into solids and once i get into my regular diet that's what i'm trying to discover what do i want to follow that i know i can stick with for a lifetime that's what i'm trying to deal with right now anyway. so make sure you have all your vitamins you saw the vitamins that i already take and i did use a lot i did write a lot of things down. So I just have like a little random notebook to help me keep track of my vitamins and my protein and my water. That worked for me. I had the time and I have taken off two weeks when I was trying to take off less days, but I did speak to my leader and she was like, you need to take off two weeks. And I'm glad she did that because honestly, yes, day seven, I could have went back to work, but it also allowed me to rest longer and the extra time allowed me to prep my liquids. And then when I do go back to work, I'll be in parade, 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 whatever. So I'll be on stage two, baby two. Um, another struggle that I'm dealing with is trying to figure out how, when I, I know I say, I know I, you're full, but you, it's just like a mind thing to say, stop eating. You're done. You need three sips. You're, you need to stop. You need to listen to your body. So me training myself to listen to my body, even with just liquids, it's something that I'm struggling with right now, but that's okay. It's come to time, it's only day 12. At least I've acknowledged where I'm struggling and trying to figure out that I'm full because I did make me some savory soup. It was just so good, I could not stop. It was like, it was just some soup and it was just so good. And I had four ounces of it and I waited 30 minutes to have some more. And next thing you know, it was not ready for me to have another four ounces. But I thought I could take it mentally, but my body said you cannot. So just understanding that after so many ounces, you're done. You're done. So I will follow with you guys in the next um, couple of days. And um, we'll be on two week post off. And thank y'all for watching. I'm trying to keep my videos under 20 minutes because all that long stuff, nobody's watching it. So I hope y'all enjoyed this informational video and you guys take care and guess what? Whoop, whoop, we on array. And you know, since COVID, I feel so good because after the surgery, I don't know, it seemed like I have more energy, I'm more vibrant and I just feel good. Like, I just feel good. And I, I haven't felt like this in so long and COVID did definitely knock me <laughs> And being that I feel much better than before, I'm being more active, I'm walking, I'm exercising. I'm not exercising, but I am walking, but I'm going to upgrade to my exercise program that I've already did prior to COVID. And uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys tuned to that as well. But keep moving. Um, do you. Be the better you. Whatever version you are, be better. Um, if anyone asks you what is your ultimate goal, my ultimate goal is to be a better version of yourself. That's it. Toodles from your girl, Austin. I had to come back on real quick. Um, so another thing I use, so they sent me home with this little ugly white binder that to keep, that was whack. I used it for a couple of days because it just kept everything in place. It made my stomach feel comfortable when I was walking. But after so many days, I stopped using it. And then I did use my uh, abdominal binder that I got from Target. That's like a postpartum thing. And this kind of worked for me. It got the job done. It was better than that ugly white binder that just was feeling flapping off. But it that that does work for the first few days. So don't don't just sleep on that. Okay. Alrighty, y'all take care.